All right, welcome everybody. This is the first real reaction video of the College Conservative. Today we got students want top earners to pay for their tuition. Let's get right into it. To the details of what really they're asking for here, uh, Kelly Mullen, a million uh, student march national event organizer. Kelly, good to have you. Keely, I'm sorry. Is it Keely or Kelly? That's okay. Right. It's Keely. I apologize. Uh, so what do you totally want fine. here? What do you want? Um, well, so the movement, the Million Student March, um, is a movement for a more um, equitable and fair system of education. As All right, so right off the bat, we got equitable, right? It's a common phrase used by leftists. It essentially means a quality of outcome and not a quality of opportunity. And it boils down really to a sense of entitlement. Right down. As opposed to um, the really corporate model that we have right now. Uh, so the three core demands of the National Day of Action are free public college, a cancellation of student debt, and a $15 an hour minimum wage um, for people who work on the campus. And how's that going to be paid? Um, you see the look on her face right there? You can tell that her being in the college bubble has definitely not helped her. She definitely is not expecting that question. Has probably never been asked that before. You would be surprised how little questioning actually is done on these campuses. Great question. Uh, I mean, you know, so I'm not sure if you're talking on like a national level or at particular schools. I can sort of touch on both. Um, at well, my if you wanted all that stuff, University, someone has to pick up the tab. No answer. Yeah, who would that be? Um, the one percent of people in society that are hoarding um, the wealth and really sort of causing um, a catastrophe that students are facing. I mean, we have a, a relationship right now. And she said catastrophe, creating wealth and value in society. That's a catastrophe, apparently. Now, where one percent of the population owns more wealth than the ninety-nine percent combined. All right. So um, if the one percent, Kelly, if the one percent. Mm -hmm. just had their taxes raised a few years ago back to almost 40 percent then to pay for the health care yeah. law they had them raised another few percentage points then they had their deductions right. limited to raise another couple points where depending on the state or locality they're they're, they're pushing over about 50 percent in taxes how much higher do you think how mm -hmm. much more do you think they should pay um, I think enough until we have a system where not one in two American families are uh, threatened with uh, I'm gonna have to call a cap on that one in two? I don't know where she is at. I know I live in one of the poorest towns in my county, and it is not one in two people. Vastly exaggerating the statistics here. Poverty. So where I do they that, go? Let's um, say if you tax them, they're smart folks, these people, this, this, these 1% hoarders, right? So if they leave here, yeah. then who's going to pay for all this stuff that you want? It's a fair question right there. I do like these basic questions, right? Surface level deep, and she really still can't answer them. The, her answer is being poked full of holes. If they leave the country. Oh, um, I mean, there's always going to be a 1% a in the U.S. Uh, All right, that is not, that's some very shaky logic right there, I have to say. I think a translation would be that to keep forcing people just to pay and to pay. I know people leave, people leave, so we don't have a country anymore. I'm sure she would probably just shrug that off and say, hey, this takes precedent. This radical ideology takes precedent to having a country at all. The U.S. is like the bastion of, um, of capitalism and its success. Oh, so she just said that capitalism is a success, but I'm sure she wouldn't say that on a regular, regular time. So. I think she's seeing that capitalism works, but only when it benefits her. It's interesting. That goes back to entitlement. And I think Do you that, think the one percent um, could pay for all of this? Absolutely. Uh, Eighty-five people in the world hold more wealth than half of the global population. No, wait a minute. I mean, no, no, wait, are, massive... we still, are we talking about eighty-five billionaires, or are you extending this to the one percent, or remember, we're in a little bit north of two hundred fifty thousand dollars? At what level? Keely, do you start saying you got to pay a hell of a lot more than you're paying now in taxes? I mean, I think people earning, um, certainly people earning over a million dollars a year uh, should be contributing to How the much? wellness of society. If, if it's 50% now, let's say it's around 50% with taxes, we used to have a top rate of 90%. You think we should get back to that? Um, I mean, 
I think that eventually we will get back to that. I think and eventually. You're okay with that? Um, are, are some of your friends okay with that? Do some of them want to be successful themselves and they'd be happy when they get to a level, maybe over 200,000, 250,000, they start paying 90% in tax? Yeah, so I, I do like this article. <clears throat> Sorry, this argument. However, I've seen this play out and it's weaker than you might imagine because college kids here, unfortunately, a lot of them are lazy. And they're lazy and they don't really want to work, unfortunately. They're entitled. It all boils down to entitlement. So they don't really think about, hey, once I'm successful this, once I'm successful that, it's, oh, who am I going to get to pay for all of my stuff that I want without actually having to work? Taxes on that? They'll be happy with that? Abs absolutely. I mean, I think that Keely, people, come on. You're um, talking to me here. Your friends are going to be happy getting to a point in their career when they can look outside and say, finally, I'm able to pay 90% in taxes. Obviously, um, you know, people in, in your position, you know, don't want to pay 90% um, in I taxes. I dare say, unless you're <laughs> high as a kite, you <laughs> wouldn't volunteer to pay 90%, right? <laughs> I mean, unless you really did see a considerable bang yeah. for the buck and it was worth it, right? But a lot of the times that you realize it's not worth it, and given some of the track records we've seen with government, mm -hmm. it doesn't always work, right? That's facts right there. I think as you become older, you get less concerned about theories and more about pragmatism, right? What works? And I think is when people get older, they realize that government really doesn't work all that well. And what seems to be good in the theory wise isn't actually going to actually play out well once it's actually instituted. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But the reality is, is we have to look at, at the injustice of the system as it exists right now. Then do I you mean, that's classic right there. There's no substance. It's just buzzwords in the response. Do you think you know, maybe if everyone paid a little bit more for this, would you pay a little bit more for this besides the rich that, to pay for that it's worth it? That you think these are, are but good people goals? People already are paying for no, this. No, no, yeah. I asked but, it but differently. Working... I asked you, would you, Keely, and your friends, and your mom, and your dad, and your family, would mm -hmm. they happily pay more yeah. to provide all of these benefits you just outlined? Of course, and we already are. Um, no, I mean, no, 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 I'm, no. You I'm just graduating. said to pay for some of the things you wanted, the rich should pay significantly more than they're paying right now. Now you're telling me. Yeah, that's exactly you, what I'm saying. Okay, Everyone's okay, already but, paying. Uh, well, they're not. I mean, now you're saying for the added, these added benefits that you want, and they're fine benefits, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. You, you think your friends, their parents, your parents, your family would be happy to pay a little bit more to provide these guarantees and benefits. I come from an incredibly working class family, um, and my family is already on numerous forms of... I don't believe that she's on a truly working class family because... Most working class families you see, they really have to go up and get it in this world. If you are from a working class family like I am, you have to go out and get it. There's no motivation that you can tell whatsoever within her. And I've seen a lot of girls like this, I've seen a lot of people like this. They're not motivated and they may come from, from places that aren't the best, but they're still not motivated. And when you're truly from the working class, you know that you have to go out and get it. You can't just complain all day like she's doing of government assistance and is basically scraping by, you know, in order to get me through college. Um, I, I live in a world and I, and I see a system around me where there's a population that's doing nothing to contribute um, to the progression of society. Education is really the only way that we have innovation, that well, we Keely, have, I'm sure um, you're, you know, you sound very smart. You know what's going on. You mentioned what's going on in the world. You're probably aware of what's happening in Greece yeah. and these other countries that provided mm -hmm. all these benefits and then some many of which you outlined very nicely here for us today. And they're going broke, yeah. and they're out of money, and they're, they're, they, they don't know what to do. And their people are riding on the streets because they can't believe the money's gone, and the benefits and the promises yeah. are gone. That's right. History is a great lesson. You can learn a lot from it, right? And it's clear that she's not learning anything from this. And the people, there's a lot of people who describe this ideology, not just her. They don't look at the history. They only want to look forward which makes no sense because you have to look at the history in order to push forward. Gone. Right. What do you think? Um, I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a, like a global catastrophe right now of um, complete like defunding of social services. Because and they ran of, out of money. Of public. Yeah. All right. I think she means to say 
that they can't pay for these services. They never could, but they just wanted to try it out, right? And then once people got hooked on these services and they essentially people were played and they were fools forever imagining that it could work. And now they're broke all across the board because these services left the entire country gutted and broke. All right, I think we're gonna start, stop there, right? For part one, make sure to look out for part two, all right? Make sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate y'all. Have a nice rest of your day.